Hello. We are broadcasted from in the basement at an undisclosed location. This video was based solely on my own understanding of the celestial system that we are in. This understanding was gained many decades ago and I thought served me well. Well, it turns out that I completely confabulated fusion with fission. There is in fact no nuclear fission on the sun. It is nuclear fusion, whereby hydrogen atoms fuse into helium and thus reduce in their size. This reduced size has to be compensated by a release of energy. This causes the release of energy from the sun that powers our solar system. The last clip is a demonstration. A demonstration of an ominous reality in which many of us have no clue. What are you? I mean really, what are you? In short, you are what you perceive yourself to be. And what exactly is your perception of yourself based on? In a word, memory. Your memories of yourself, what is around you, and the totality of your experience, which, might I add, is recalled by your memory. I present to you the brain, an organ of such vast significance and complexity that no video that I will ever produce could ever surmise it, nor will I attempt to. From time to time, however, I will try to tackle a small segment within its structure. I will begin with another tale, another story, another experience of mine which seems to be a running theme in these videos. Forgive me, I am a writer. What did you expect from me? But I digress. I have a friend, and one day, as friends do, we were telling each other stories. I was telling him of the time that I was walking along one of the banks of the two rivers in the city that I live, alongside another mutual friend of ours. I told him that our other friend threw a tennis ball into the river. Now, this part is horrifying, and quite frankly, I don't want to tell you. But to underscore this video, I will. What followed was that a dog, unleashed on the other bank of the river, proceeded to jump in after the ball and was pulled under by an undertow. That tennis ball surfaced. The dog never did. I know. Heartbreaking. Now, as I told this story to my friend, he told me that's not correct. He looked perplexed and then told me that it was in fact he that threw the tennis ball into that river. Furthermore, that I was never even there. He was in fact there with his brother. Bless his great heart for never calling me a liar and never holding me accountable for that obvious blunder. How could I make up such a preposterous lie? How? The thing is, I believe myself. I believe the lie. I don't know when, but eventually I figured out what had happened. I had a confabulation. Confabulation is a type of memory error in which gaps in a person's memory are unconsciously filled with fabricated, misinterpreted, or distorted information. When someone confabulates, they are confusing things they have imagined with real memories. A person who is confabulating is not lying. They are not making a conscious or intentional attempt to deceive. Rather, they are confident in the truth of their memories. There are two types of confabulations, provoked and spontaneous. The provoked confabulation occurs when someone creates an untrue story in response to a specific question. This type of confabulation is the most common and frequently occurs in people with dementia or amnesia. Spontaneous confabulation is less common. It occurs when someone tells a fabricated story without any obvious motivation or provocation. These are the signs and symptoms of a confabulation. Lack of awareness that a memory is false or distorted. There is no attempt to deceive or lie. The story is usually drawn from the person's memory. The story can either be very probable or very improbable. The above information was the definition of a confabulation. I will give you one that I found to be more striking, more alluring, more mysterious, and I dare say, 
more factual. I will give you the ideas of a brilliant man. A man named Sam Vaknin. I'm paraphrasing here, so don't quote me. He explained confabulation in this manner. When you think of memories, you imagine them being stored somewhere. Like a file in a filing cabinet. Like a hard drive in a computer. That is not in fact the case. You first recall your memory emotionally with a particular narrative. This narrative could be good or it could be bad. For example, if you remember someone after a prolonged absence, you first remember how they made you feel, how you ended things, and then your mind brings up memories that fit that narrative. This means that your memories are not solid, not a file in a filing cabinet but are fluid and change to fit the narrative the mind requires of them. This is biological. Self-preservation is the law of the land. Now I want you to imagine making up a story that dramatic and to insert yourself into it. Now back to what prompted this video. I was convinced that nuclear fission was how the sun produced energy and that hydrogen bombs were the result of nuclear fission on the sun. Furthermore, hydrogen bombs on earth are the same as the type of explosions on the sun. This entire thought process was a confabulation. My memory was not a file in a filing cabinet. It was fluid, it changed.